Well, I have officially got a cold, which means uh, under current directives, I have to quarantine at home for a while, getting tested on Thursday. I'm sure it's not COVID. The kids have colds too. That's all it is, but the rules are the rules. So that means maybe a little bit more time out here. Probably not. Probably spend the extra time working on the deck when I don't feel too cruddy, but uh, I do have this lift cylinder here on the workbench. And I don't know, it doesn't match what's in my parts manual. It doesn't look like it comes apart the same way. So I'm gonna do a little bit of exploration and see if I can figure out how this thing comes apart. It kind of looks like it's kind of welded together. I may end up just cutting it apart, rebuilding it, and then welding it back together. But we'll see. All right, well, I've got a bit of a horrendous mess going on here, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Um, basically, most hydraulic cylinders, this end is a large nut that comes off. But in this case, it, it's not that. It doesn't have a snap ring that I can see. It's just kind of like it's folded over. So I'm not certain that maybe this end was once um, cut apart. No, that doesn't really make sense either. I'm really not certain what's going on here. I've tried to pull on it now that the fitting's out. Sometimes uh, the fitting will be all that retains it. Now that that's out, um, it isn't making any real difference. So, I don't know if it'll even, you know, maybe if it moved a bit with the fitting in place or whatever, then I could tell what's going on. But, um, might just be one of these, uh, non-repairable kind of things, but that's all relative and I'm sure I can't get one. Uh, to take it to a hydraulic shop for repair is going to cost more than the tractor cost. And I couldn't find any really suitable alternatives. So I'm just going to make an exploratory little kind of cut here on the side of this lip and see if this is kind of folded over. So I'm thinking you probably can't see this, but just kind of inside here, I can just make out the line where this gland nut is. And uh, if I measure kind of the thickness of the metal here versus here, it's clear that this end is kind of folded over the uh the nut or it's formed that way so i think my plan of attack at the moment i'm going to pull this rod out of the way i'm going to cut the tube down lower and uh you know i'll mark it so i know where to put it back together and we'll weld it together and nothing ventured nothing gained actually come to think of it i think uh just going at this with uh with a sawzall, it's maybe not the uh, most finesse way. I know somebody that I think I can ask to help me. I don't know how soon that'll be, but um, I think I'm gonna have to call in the cavalry. So I'll keep you informed as to how that's going. In the meantime, I'll get some caps and I'll cap those lines off and I should be able to still use the machine. So at least there's that. Well, it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, I guess this is where the Gilson project is gonna sit for a little bit. And uh, you know, sometimes a quick project ends up going kind of sideways and taking longer. And this is no different. So, c'est la vie. And uh, in the meantime, maybe I'll uh, I gotta get that deck finished before winter, and as soon as that's in kind of a reasonable state that I can at least pause, I gotta get some chicken coop figured out for the winter. So uh, I got some projects on my plate yet. No rest for the weary. Hey, just doing an oil change here on my 
friend's uh, Honda Odyssey. I don't often make a habit of doing uh, bread and butter automotive work, but she's a really good friend and a longtime supporter, so I do not mind at all. And, you know, it's just an oil change. Easy peasy. While I'm going through it, I guess we'll talk a little about oil changes and stuff. So, uh, I've pulled the old oil filter off. Let's get you set up a little higher here. So I've already pulled the old oil filter off and uh, got a new oil filter here. And just to talk oil filters, this is a Motomaster OE Plus. It's made by Champ Labs in, it's in the US, Illinois, I think, Indiana. Anyway, it's not a Fram. And that's the main thing. Fram is kind of notorious for fairly poor quality products. I've never personally actually had an issue with them, but yeah, if you cut them apart, there's lots of videos on YouTube. People cut them apart and you can see the difference. Uh, these are pretty highly rated and they're really not very expensive. So in the normal fashion, I like to add a little oil to the filter just to get it going. A lot of oil came out when I removed the filter on this particular design, it's kind of remote mounted and oil all over the control arm and stuff. So um, probably not saying anything that a lot of you don't already know. Just gonna grab a rag. Uh, but some people don't know. You know, my uh, my opa took his Chrysler LeBaron to the dealership to have the oil level checked. So, you know, some folks don't. That's okay. Um, while we're on the subject of motor oil, this is Mobile One 020, as called for. Uh, of course, you can get it pretty inexpensively when it's on sale, so I like to use synthetic. Uh, I'm not one of these people who says that, well, I run synthetic oil so I can run 25,000 kilometers, you know, 15,000 miles, because Synthetic, I still follow manufacturers' oil change intervals, but that's an interesting subject all in its own. And I have a little bit of insight into it that some others may not. Um, fact of the matter is, we used to pull oil out of the ground. It was made from decomposed prehistoric plants. And we'd refine it a little bit, stick it in there. The old stuff would come out, be all black. And we do that every 3,000 miles, 5,000 kilometers, and life is good. Of course, we controlled our fuel with carburetors. We controlled our ignition with vacuum and little whirling weights and things. And so all of it was kind of a, an inexact science. Manufacturing wasn't as good as it is today either. So you could kind of get away with that. And you would do your oil changes more frequently to make up for those shortcomings. Engine control management, so much better now than it used to be, you know, on the fuel and ignition sides, manufacturing tolerances have improved and you're not getting those contaminants in the oil like you used to, but you still are. So intervals can increase and that's fine. But these commercials with flames and pistons and crankshafts and viscosity breakdown and the oil turns out black and carbon, it's not true. It's all fake. If the fire is reaching your oil, it's too late. Your engine's done. And the proper parts of your engine that the oil should touch don't compare to millions of years underground extreme pressure and heat that it's subjected to. Your engine can't do that. The loads inside an engine are staggering, but they're nothing compared to what that oil already went through. And if it's synthetic, you know, these molecules are made in a, in a lab and they can withstand it. It's fine. What doesn't change between synthetic and conventional, generally speaking, are the additives. And the additives can break down over time. The other thing that happens is byproducts from combustion can slip through past the piston rings. They get down into your crankcase. They mix with water from condensation. When your engine cools, they form acids and that can damage your bearings. And that's gonna happen no matter what oil you put in there. So follow manufacturer's oil change intervals. Just get that stuff out. Oil's cheap. If you do it yourself, it's nothing. 
and it just makes good sense. So I've owned uh, Jeep Patriots since 2000, late 2007. Say what you will about the Patriot. Quality, mm, but you know what? They've served me really well. And when they do break, they're cheap and easy to fix. So I'm happy with that. Uh, they've, I've had two. My mother-in-law has had two. Uh, varying years. They've all had the 2.4 liter, the 2 liter same engine, just smaller. And my 2008 that I bought new at the end of 2007 had an oil change interval recommendation of 6,000 kilometers, which is pretty reasonable. My mother-in-law bought a 2010 and the interval on that was uh, 10,000 kilometers. Same engine, same oil, Everything's the same. They just, they found, hey, we're not having failures, so we'll bump it up. And, you know, they spend a lot of research on this subject where, you know, you could change your oil every time you go out and maybe it would, well, your engine's still not going to last forever because wear will still happen. So where is that acceptable cost point of the oil changes versus replacing your engine sooner? Um... She traded in her 2010 for a 2012 recently, and its oil change interval is 12,000 kilometers. I currently have a 2015, and the oil change interval, 16,000 kilometers. Same engine, same oil, same filter, 16,000 kilometers. That's a little too long for my tastes, so I do it every 10,000. But if I'm a bit late, I don't lose any sleep because... I have until 16,000 kilometers before I really have to worry about it. So it just goes to show that um, engine oil intervals have a lot less to do with the oil you're putting into it. Yeah, no, don't buy cheap garbage. I mean, come on, right? This jug is 32 bucks Canadian or 28 bucks Canadian when it's on sale. Like, you can't go wrong. But uh, don't just run your oil longer just because you run synthetic. I... I personally, I don't feel that's correct. Unless you're getting it tested, you know, in a big engine, a, a big diesel engine, and you're getting it tested all the time. Hey, that's a different story. But now you're paying the cost of testing. So that's your call. In the meantime, I better get this thing done. She's got Luke out for a walk and she'll be back and she'll be like, why is this not done? So I'm gonna get her done. Cheers. now finished on the electric tractor project uh, gonna be pretty fun to try it out I've assembled the trailer there were no real pitfalls to watch out for you got to press pretty hard to get the little stake sides in but other than that you know it's it's really basic um, yes yeah, so the remote works trailers done that's about it I might make up some decals for the hood sides or something like that but that's a uh, a project for another day. For now, I think I'm going to head in, pour myself a little drink maybe, and watch a little TV before bed. Just relax. So uh, next time you see this, hopefully we'll be riding Luke around with it. That'll be pretty fun. All right. Good night, folks. Case, of course, could sit in my chair. This thing bring me.
A case of course. Oh, yeah, I like that. I will now get out of my chair. Yeah. Jesus, I forgot my phone. What? 